Okay. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's slick. Okay, I'm glad I've got the Solomon Speed Cross Forest today. They're not on my feet yet. And uh, look at those lugs. Look at those lugs. Okay, I'm crouching down here because it's pretty windy. And uh, I don't. I, hopefully you can hear me with a microphone and all. All right, starting off with a tip of the day. Uh, you want to start your runs off in the winter time slightly chilled. And it's hard because you want to be warm on your run. You don't want to be freezing. You don't want your fingers to be freezing. But just remember, once you start moving, you heat up really quick. And I have to remind myself of this all the time. So that's for all the new runners out there. That, you know, And there's quite a few of you that are watching these videos that it's, uh, it's tempting to overdress. Very tempting, especially when it's snowing out. But anyway, that's my tip of the day. All right, putting on the speed cross for us. Let's do this. Come on. Moving off the main trail, no tracks, dead ahead. No tracks, dead ahead. Snow's getting deeper. Started off probably in about three inches of snow. I'd say we're starting to get closer to five. So going up the mountain, it's getting deeper. It's getting deeper, but the speed cross fours are crushing it. downhill. I've only fallen once so far. Let's hope it stays that way. Here we go. Okay, coming up on the end of the run. And uh, it's the first time I feel tired on a run in probably two months. I've been taking it easy in uh, basically from late November, or mid-November, late November to now, just taking it easy. Took two weeks off, and this is uh, gonna end up being 10 miles today. And it's really the first run where I'm like, yeah, okay, I feel tired. And so, anyway, it's good. It's good to take a nice break and now, start working back I'll talk more about this back at the house back at the back of the shed oh baby what a day oh man powder powder powder
All right, there you have it. There you have it. 10 miles. What is that? About 18 kilometers. I'm kind of guessing off the top of my head. Uh, okay, I'm titling today's run First Gear Suppleness Training on Strava. First Gear Suppleness Training on Strava. I'll explain what I mean back of the house after I go get a little more suppleness training in the gym. By the way, I'm cold. It's cold out, man. And we're back in the shed. Oh, it's nice. I got a heater out here and it just feels cozy. Nice and cozy. Okay, shout out again to Saucony. Did you see yesterday's vlog about the Saucony Fast Twitch 8 shoes? On the back of the box, this is the best shoe box I have ever seen. On the back of the box, this shoe box, they have a pacing chart for 5K, 10K, all the way up to the full marathon. And then on the right hand side here, you can, you can mark down your PRs. I love this. Brilliant marketing, Saucony, and kudos to you. All right, I'm gonna hang this up. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. It's hanging up. Can you see it over there? See it over there in the corner? All right. Shout out to everyone who talked about and shared their story on yesterday's question of the day. Incredible stories coming in. We could write a book, ladies and gentlemen. We could compile a book of everyone's reflections on their first run that they ever did in their, like, that experience of getting out the door in running shoes for the first time in their life. Brill, if you haven't seen yesterday's vlog, just don't even have to watch the vlog. Just go read the comments and see everybody else's stories about how they discovered running. It's inspiring, it's inspiring. Okay, and moving on to the Solomon Fast Wing Hybrid Jacket. Here's this jacket that I've been wearing for the last couple months, but in Denver we have had zero snow all winter until today. So I haven't really been able to test this jacket out in the elements in, you know, wet snow. And that's what it was today. It was very, very wet snow. This is not a winter jacket. And therefore, I am not going to make a second video tonight. I was going to do that for you guys, but I don't feel comfortable making another video when, guess what? This is going to be a brilliant spring jacket. Spring jacket, maybe late fall. This is not, uh, it doesn't hold out the water very, like really, really well. Not enough Gore-Tex built into the seams. I got pretty wet today. I got, even though I was layered up, I was layered up pretty well in these two items, this uh, Solomon t-shirt here, and then this was a uh, L.L. Bean, uh, basically long underwear here, this blue, this blue, uh, blue shirt here. And so bottom line, I love this jacket, love it. For windy conditions or snow that is not a wet snow. Here in Denver, we can often get snow. It's called, uh, I believe it's called a like champagne snow. So it's very light. Uh, skiers love it because you can carve through it really nicely. Today's snow is just so wet and I, I was pretty soaked by the end of the run. In fact, I ran under some trees at one point and like at mile nine out of 10 and the snow fell on my back and I got really wet. So anyway, this is not a winter jacket. Uh, as far as the, the bad elements, and uh, I will be using this so, so much all winter so long as it's not wet out and raining and, and wet snow. And so this jacket, I love it. I really, really do love it. And yes, it's down below in case you're interested. I believe it's around $100 now, maybe a little on the high end for my taste. I, I will admit that, but I'm telling you, I will wear this a ton in the spring and even in the summer on the top of 14,000 foot peaks. It'll be a great jacket for that, but uh, just not quite warm enough nor waterproof enough for conditions like today, okay? So no second video today, just wanna make that clear, no second video today. Uh, gosh, whew, I love it, but you know, you know, what are you gonna do, what are you gonna do? You, you test, you try, you test, you keep trying. Oh. All right, and today's run was 10 miles, 16 kilometers, so I was a little off earlier, it was actually 16 kilometers, 10 and a half minutes per mile, about 630 per kilometer, 2100 feet of elevation gain in the snow, and it was it was it was hard. Like I said, I was pretty tired by the end of it. And there's a reason I went up, I chose, I made the decision to make a, a hard decision to like, okay, I'm gonna go make myself hurt today in the mountains. Why? Suppleness. Suppleness. Now, what is suppleness? And be patient with me again. You know, you well know by now I'm not a scientist, but this term suppleness is basically um, flexibility combined with power. So our tendons in our leg, especially our lower leg and our feet, 
they can, the tendons can uh, be more flexible and yes, give you more power if you activate them and stimulate, stim, stimulate them in different ways. So obviously today I was in the mountains in the Solomon Speed Cross 4s. They crushed it. They crushed it. And instead of running on the roads today, I told myself, okay, I know it's going to be snowy and therefore I'm going to have to focus on my form. I'm going to have to focus on pushing off of my toes a little harder because I'm fighting the uphill battle. I'm fighting the rocks that are hidden underneath the snow. And yes, I'm fighting the slick snow. And so I knew my tendons and my muscles in my lower leg and my feet were going to get an extra workout today. And sure enough, by the end, yeah, I was like, okay, I'm done at 10 miles. I'm done. And basically I'm doing this to get my body ready to go hopefully as fast as possible when the workouts start, like the speed workouts for the marathon. And what I'm really excited about for this suppleness topic is that, well, first of all, I need to avoid plantar fasciitis in 2019. That's not allowed this year. And so the more I can focus in the gym, you saw me in the gym earlier, and on my form in the mountains going straight forward and really using, and I, try and visualize it with me, but really using the full range of motion from the moment your foot strikes the ground to the moment your your toes, all the way up to the tippy top of your toes. And yes, especially that big toe is pushing off and giving you more power to move your body further down the trail, down the road, down the track as far as possible. And so I'm really trying to visualize and I don't do it the entire run. I probably do it, you know, uh, uh, 200 meters out of every mile and then you kind of start daydreaming and thinking about other things but I'm really trying to focus and visualize on the suppleness and flexibility and yes therefore the power that I can generate um, by stretching that Achilles tendon the tendon the fascia tendon on the bottom of my foot and all the way into that motion forward Okay, I know that was a lot. I love this topic, and yes, we're in two weeks, I will start plyometrics, which is, I'm not ready for it yet. The body isn't ready for it yet. Today was getting me ready for the plyometrics, but basically that really focusing on that form in 2019. All right, I could talk about that on the, all night. And one last point on the suppleness, the gym work. So I went to the mountains, got a really great stimulus up there. I like my easy days to be easy, silly easy ridiculously easy and hard days to be hard. So I'll do hard stuff in the mountains and then yes, zip right to the gym and keep that going. So hard days, really hard, easy days, ridiculously easy. Okay, so in the gym, I was working, yes, more on suppleness. I did a little bit of arm work. I didn't film that. I was really focused today in the gym on the ankle, the Achilles tendon, uh, the bottom of my foot, my calves, all of that lower leg alignment. All right, so here we go. I did, so you saw me today in the gym doing the high knees up onto the box really enjoy that one and it's that's kind of the dancing that I talked about on Strava the other day like just being light on your feet light on your feet okay and then also the vertical jumps and oh my, this might be my new favorite lift in the gym it's just that explosion that explosion of jumping up onto the box that I think will pay off down the road for the marathon and the Pikes Peak Ascent, frankly. I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. And then I jumped onto the BOSU Balance Board Ball Thingamabobber. I don't even know how to pronounce this. It's B-O-S-U. Maybe you've used one. I love this thing. I was doing squats, trying to keep it as, as aligned as possible and using that balance. And again, triggering those little teeny tiny muscles and tendons in your lower legs by getting on this balance, this BOSU Balance thing. And then I was doing the single leg squats and oh, burn, baby, burn. Those things are amazing. And yes, my left leg is definitely weaker and tighter than my right leg. And so I really need to focus on strengthening my left leg in 2019. And then lunges, nice classic lunges. And again, working with the balance, working on that balance so that I'm going, you know, practicing that straightforward motion. And then calf raises. I like calf raises and I really use the calf raises, frankly, to stretch out my Achilles and yes, stretch out the fascia tendon on the bottom of my foot. And then I couldn't film anything else in the gym, even though I did more because my memory card was full and I filled it up today. Whoops, so what do you gotta do? What do you gotta do? 
And yes, one last point, I'm finally starting to see some wear and tear on the Speed Cross 4s through the upper. I'm gonna film it for you right now. This is like a badge of honor to break down my first pair of Solomons that are like, they're actually starting to wear out. Like, I love it. That means I'm putting them through the paces and I can retire them soon. And yes, the Speed Cross 5s are uh, being released very soon, so stay tuned for that. Oh, it's just like, it's good to put a shoe like all the way to its max, and they're not quite done yet, but they're getting there, they're getting there. And that's it, it's keyword, snow, you better believe it, it's snow, really the first snow all winter for us. And the question of the day, most memorable snow run of your life. What was the most memorable snow run of your life? And I realize we have people watching in Hawaii, but shout out to Hawaii. I, I saw that comment the other day. We have people in, you know, India, and I know it can be hot in certain areas of India. We have a lot of people watching in Brazil. Shout out to Brazil. And so you may have never even seen snow in your entire life. So you may not be able to answer this question of the day, but for everybody else that experiences snow, like this is where the Scandin Scandinavian countries can really shine through. What is your most memorable snow run of your entire life? And uh, all right, thank you for answering. Thanks for being here. That was a fun day. That was a fun day. I'm glad you guys could come experience a little, uh, a little suppleness in the mountains. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.